Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Let's talk today about your purpose and whether or not stepping into your purpose path will be easy. Many good-hearted people want to step into their purpose, but they are held back by a belief that stunts their growth. And this is a very common belief that many gurus have encouraged in the past. I don't hear that as much anymore, but it used to be pretty common. It is the belief that your purpose should be easy or it won't feel like work. And on one hand, that is true. But on the other hand, and there's a nuances to that, right? Not every person's path will be the same. And it is a delicate balance that requires discernment that we were not taught how to navigate. The confusion around what to expect from your path may be keeping you from stepping into your purpose. But I'm going to show you today how to navigate your path and how to understand when should it be easy and maybe when it might not. It is true that there will be moments of ease and joy and bliss up front for some, but not always. For others, it may not be comfortable in the beginning, and especially if you have unhealed wounds or trauma. Once you heal and you are fully aligned to your path and you start to create the momentum through sustained focus and attention or effort over time, you can rest assured there will be significant moments of ease and joy and bliss. But sometimes that takes time. It doesn't always come right away. And even then, it isn't every day or all the time that it's ease and joy and bliss. It's not always rainbows and sunshine. When you first get started, there are moments of feeling like, this is it. I finally found the thing that I'm searching for. Maybe you'll have that feeling of finally switching onto the right train track as if you were on the wrong one your entire life. It can feel like this is where I'm meant to be. This is where I was supposed to be all along. But the expectation that it should be easy all the time and never feel like work is very misleading. And it keeps a lot of people stuck. Clinging to that belief will keep us from taking the steps that we need to, to be able to find our purpose and to arrive at that place of ease and bliss, bliss that we seek. <laughs> This belief is especially problematic when we are dealing with those unhealed wounds and trauma and not facing them. Whether it was your parents or a toxic relationship, or maybe you were in the military, or maybe it's just the messaging and conditioning of the world today, it is no wonder why we would want to hop on the easy train. We're looking for that ticket out of suffering. We are exhausted, beat down. We question our value and worth subconsciously nearly every minute of the day. Every action or word or social engagement causes us to question, am I okay? Am I safe? Enough is enough and we've had enough and we want the easy way out and nobody can blame you for that. But unfortunately, there's really, well, I don't want to say there's no easy way out, but we have to understand how to feel our way into the ease and the bliss. It doesn't just come overnight. And if we stop trying, we may never get there. So our nervous systems are highly, highly sensitized, especially for those of us who had challenging upbringings. We're sensitive to criticism and rejection and failure. And the vast majority of our energy will go to defending ourselves. Or maybe we put on a brave face and we have to feel, or we feel like we have to keep up the mirage that all is well, when the truth is sometimes we feel like we're dying inside. That will cause us to not have the energy for effort. Not only do we not want to hustle and grind, we don't have the capacity to do it. Our minds and bodies are exhausted, and it's especially difficult for the sensitive and kind heart-centered beings, the very ones who came here to make the world a better place. I understand. I've been there with you, right? But as the Zen Buddhist monk said, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. Our purpose will be 1,000% worth the effort required. I can promise you that. But there certainly will be effort required. Our challenge comes when we believe it should be easy or it won't feel like work. Things like discipline and consistency and pushing through fear will be required at some times. And I know it's not easy and sometimes it can feel damn near impossible when we have unhealed wounds. And that can cause us to feel such a crippling fear and maybe we can't even breathe or see straight. Bootstrapping is not possible. 
We cannot force ourselves through this. We cannot break down the barriers through willpower. No matter how hard we try with trauma, our trauma response will always shut us down. But it is possible when we use somatic healing therapy to heal and remove the blocks and traumas from our bodies that cause us to feel that paralyzing fear or response that shuts us down. The thing that drains our energy, the energy that is required to make things happen is healed through somatic healing. We all know that it would be silly to think we could grow a garden without putting seeds in the ground and tending to it. And just like planting a garden requires nurturing and weeding and patience, stepping into your purpose requires taking action, following your passions, nurturing your gifts over time, and doing the healing work. Manifestation is a co-creative process and it requires your taking action. We cannot just think our way into it while sitting on the couch with a bag of potato chips. Even if you don't want to, or you think it seems too hard, sometimes the anticipation is actually the worst part. We can look at our spiritual paths as evidence of ease or dis-ease. Has your spiritual path been easy? Has the divine given you a magic pony ride out of the challenges? You get to ride high above it all. Or have the difficulties strengthened you and made you stronger? Are you now more cap capable of spotting the BS or getting yourself out of difficult situations? Notice how these situations have shaped you. And yes, in some cases we feel stronger, but in other cases we just feel broken down and we really struggle to appreciate those experiences. And if you're in that place, then healing is required. But once again, when we heal, the benefits will be obviously profound and we will know why we experience what we experienced. Just the same way that the spiritual path has its challenges, so too does the life purpose path. But it doesn't mean it has to be painful. It doesn't mean that we have to suffer. So I want to alleviate you of that concern. Sometimes we cling to the belief that it should be easy or it won't feel like work because we can't accept the fact that it might be a little bit difficult because we don't have capacity. We have not healed. We have not emptied our cup of the stress that we are full of to be able to handle it, handle it right? So again, it doesn't mean that it has to be painful. Challenging, yes, but not painful. The pain is a choice right? If we resist the challenges, we will suffer. Pain plus resistance equals suffering, but surrender creates flow and ease after healing. You can still have flow and ease in challenge. You can choose to see how life is happening for you and not to you. You can look for the benefit that is offered in the experience and recognize, ah, I'm leveling up. This is going to make me even more powerful, even stronger, even more effective, even more abundant. As an example, I used to hate public speaking when I was young. I nearly vomited when I had to give a speech in front of the class. And heaven forbid, it actually was a speech in Spanish. <laughs> my whole body shook when I first tried to do a Facebook Live. And when I first started my business, that was required. But look at how things have changed. It's a non-issue now. It barely phases me. And all of that is due to the work that I did, the somatic healing work to remove those traumas from my body, desensitize those triggers and allow my nervous system to be able to tolerate eyes on you, right? The commitment to show up and never allowing that trauma to shut me down. I give 1000% credit to trauma spotting and the divine support that is available to us when we don't give up and we open up through the healing process. Thomas Edison said that our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. And so the first step is just not giving up. Keep trying. Make a commitment to coming back over and over as many times as needed until you are successful. Never allow the story of, uh, I tried and it didn't work, creep in for you. Never say to yourself, I can't do this. Only ask, how can I do this? Invest in yourself, invest in your future. Make the commitment to healing the wounds and the traumas that are holding you back with somatic therapies. And it could be trauma spotting, but there are others out there. Identify the experience in your past that formed the belief that it's not safe to fail 
or that criticism or rejection will be too much to handle. Learn to work with the nervous system and understand dysregulation and how to come back to that safe place within yourself, regardless of the external circumstances. Desensitize the triggers that shut you down and learn to nurture and feed your soul so that you can create a life that is worth living and then in turn, regain your energy. Refuse to let go of those difficult experiences. Don't let them go to waste. Make them your fuel that drives you and it helps you help others, those who need to heal from the very thing that you went through. Remember that being hijacked is a form of regulation, right? Or dysregulation, I should say. It's a dysregulated nervous system. And it can feel like fatigue or overwhelm or distraction. Sometimes it even looks like self-sabotage or those excuses, those pesky ones that sneak in and say, I don't have enough money or I don't have enough time or I don't have the gear or whatever resource you want to blame it on. Those questions that we ask ourselves, you know, do I have anything to offer or do people want to listen to what I have to say? This is your brain's way of convincing you to go the other way. Just don't worry about that life purpose thing. Napoleon Hill's book, Outwitting the Devil, said that the greatest weapon used by the devil is distraction. So notice how that distraction wants to creep in and convince you that you'll do it later, right? We hear the phase, or I'm sorry, the phrase that it's not about the destination, but it's about the journey. And it's about the journey because it's about who we are becoming along the way. It's the healing work and the leveling up. As you do that work, the work shapes you. This is how we embody our highest self. This is how we become who we were made to be. This is how we align to our original design. The challenge shapes us into the most beautiful versions of ourselves. And just like coal becomes a diamond under the pressure, so too will we in following our joy and our bliss compass that will be a lot of fun and many times. And when it becomes too arduous and it becomes so painful and difficult that you don't wanna be there or do it, that's when you know you're off track. Don't quit, just pivot. It's easy for hypervigilance to creep in time and time again. And yet we can keep coming back to the calm nervous system state of the feminine, magnetic, allowing, and receptive energy that guides us towards our path. And that is the delicate balance. Yes, we have to get activated to take action, but we come right back home to calm and receptive, feminine, magnetic, allowing state that allows the divine to guide and tell us when to move or how to move. It's when we allow the activation that causes us to feel rushed or pressured or insufficient or inadequate that we have that urge to just quit or give up, then we know we're misaligned again. And we just come back to regulation, come back to the nervous system state of reception, feminine magnetic allowing. So again, let me remind you, it doesn't have to be painful. After healing, we're able to expand beyond all previously conceived limits, infinite potential, there is nothing that is off limits for you. Imagine when you are in your unhealed, wounded state, you are chained, you are limited, you are shrinking, you are playing small. But when you heal your trauma, you break free from those change, chains, <laughs> change comes with it. You are infinite potential. You are receptive to all that is being made available to you. That's when we learn to flow with life and we see the beauty in the challenges no longer do we get shut down. No longer do we resist what is. And this is how we enjoy the journey. It becomes fun. You learn to love your life and you learn to create a life that you love. So let's reframe our expectations of the life purpose path. Will there be times of ease and joy? Yes. Will there be times of challenge and testing? Also, yes. And we can choose to enjoy it all challenge or ease. This is how we ascend. This is how we step up. This is how we level up. This is how we step into our purpose. This is how we get closer to the divine. This is how we receive the love and the respect that we desire. This is how we feel worthy. 
And this is how we see our value and worth reflected to us. This is how we become all that we were made to be and experience all of the beautiful gifts that life has to offer. So the choice is yours. Will you choose to cling to that belief that life purpose should be easy or that it shouldn't feel like work? Are you willing to forego your life purpose? Are you willing to stay stuck where you are? Or are you ready to reset or level set your expectations and know that stepping into your purpose will be a transition and it may feel a little bit challenging. You may see some of the challenges over the benefits in the beginning, but if you choose to see the benefits, you will always find it. And in time, likely just a few short years, you will break free from the matrix. You will expand in new ways beyond your wildest dreams, claiming your abundance birthright, finally being truly free in every possible way, and helping to end human suffering. The choice is yours, so choose wisely. I do love you, my friends, and I am here for you. So if you'd like to know more about somatic healing therapies, you're like, what is this somatic thing? How does it work? How do I break free from the blocks that are holding me back? I posted a video just for you to help you understand. I will see you on the next one. I love you, my friends.